So, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, the editor of uh, Fractal Edge Press, Mr. Wayne Allen Jones. Did you hear that the um, that Bigelow sold the Skinwalker Ranch? No. Did you hear that they sold the Roswell crash site? Oh, wow. Yeah, somebody Ouch. bought the Roswell crash site from the original owners, and they're not going to let people on it anymore. You think that's part of the conspiracy? Oh, I think it's part of like, oh, I'm going to pretend to do that, and then I'm going to charge a lot of other people a lot more money per person. Probably. Go do whatever. I can't imagine there's not people out there with, you know, like metal detectors and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it's alien really metal. Why would, so you, why would an Earthling's metal detector detect alien metal? Oh, no, it, 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 was, it was the memory metal that they had. Okay, wait. Oh, yeah. I, have, I have some Britannica great books here. Self-healing. Yeah, self-healing, self and you could crush it up and it opened oh, up. Oh, yeah, hello. And, um, and Bigelow's been trying to get that. I have some copies of the Britannica's great books that I could barely read. Wayne Allen Jones, do you want Tolstoy? Do you want a copy of the American State Papers, the Federalist Papers, and J uh, John Stuart Mill? Or do you want Locke, Berkeley, and Hume? Second one. Second one. American State Papers yeah. and, and this guy, J.S. Mill. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, John this Stewart. is the author, of, uh, the author of several books, including Stoneworks and Decades of Rehearsal, and he's the... Uh, editor and publisher of Fractal Edge Books, the one, the only, Mr. Wayne Allen yes, Jones. Which is actually being resurrected. Resurrected? Yes. Cool. Um, and I'm now, just recently, the president of the Poets Club of Chicago. No more Tom Romy? Even though, yeah, I'm kind of got six. So oh, know. cool. Um, and, oh, ironically, I live in Lansing, Michigan now. <laughs> okay, just in time. Uh, are you going to be at Poets and Patrons on the 23rd? Uh, probably not. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, but I did go to, obviously, the, uh, the other thing. Um, Leonardo da Vinci is said to have been the first person to notice that if you add up the circumferences of all of the branches at a certain level of branching in a tree, or all the twigs at another level of branching, they, the sum of those things adds up to the circumference of the trunk. Yeah. And that's called Da Vinci's rule of trees. And that's partly behind what's going on here. Uh, nature revealing. Now that winter has begun its frigid reveal, under the cover of night, every time so far I begin to understand perhaps one dimension of the life of trees standing around the edge of my backyard. In daylight I see silhouettes stripped of leaves, no form of modesty available, the branching almost screams in shame at the truth revealed the algorithm of chaotic branching, how the trunk's girth rules at every level. I remember the pervasive modesty of summer, blown to full extent, hanging by threads at the ends of every twig, at the last level of branching, leaves, spaced for sun, cover naked skeletons, become a light-absorbing helmet, smooth, shimmering in the wind. I remember one tree in another yard in a cluster of three slender oaks, each reaching high before the first branches. The trio conspired and constrained their spread, dividing the circle, each accessing light according to its needs, following its own directions. One leaned its three first splits toward the house,
promising in a rare high wind to commit without intention breaking and entering. Probably the southeast corner master bedroom. Surely a god-awful mess for weeks. Nature making a statement. Imagining all that. With ladders, ropes, and saws, I took the threat down, split the wood, set it out to dry in two cords. Then, over a few years and seasons, I watched the two survivors spin into the gap their sibling left. Sensitive, programmed never to waste the light. As they spun, they too leaned into a double threat of B and E. Having no words, their actions spoke loudly with elegant simplicity. Try as you will, you'll never solve what you don't understand. Failure becomes you, dressing your ignorance with invisible cloth. You, too, parade naked before your subjects. Thank you.